So we're live and we're moving on. So I'm going to pass the baton to one of our uh, teacher facilitators, Dr. James. Why don't we welcome and do our inclusion activity? Good afternoon, everybody. Today is March 1st and it's International Wheelchair Day, Global Day of Unplugging, which starts at sunset today, National that gum, that's good day. St. Davis Day, yay! Share a Smile Day, National Peanut Butter Lovers Day, National Barista Day, National Employee Appreciation Day, National World Compliment Day, and National Plan is Follow Vacation Day. So please write in the chat uh, which day you are most celebrating or enduring at this point. Peanut butter. Share a smile. Of course, St. David's Day for David. Yay, Suzette, peanut butter. We got three people for, four people for peanut butter. Peanut butter and smiles. Ooh, barista day, ooh. Unplugging, Miss Schneider, okay. Gemma, share a smile. We're moving on. The team today for ESL Literacy and ESL One, Mr. Bob Proctor, myself, uh, Dr. James, and Sofia Mayoral. ESL Two and Three, Dave Coleman and Dr. Francisco Narciso. And ESL Four and Six, Margie Schrader and Suzette Crucio. I'm sorry, Suzette, I hope I said it right. Am I doing objective, Dave? I think so. Go for it, Bob. So let's revisit our date ESL COP goals for this year. Let's also revisit the new student score sheets. And then finally, we're going to refine our academic vocabulary class introduction, the stuff we started last time. So three simple objectives and the agenda to do all that We've got our general session we're in right now, one to two, introducing um, introduction, new score sheets, the before reading, comprehension activities, and then day one of academic vocabulary routine. That's the focus. Then we go to our leveled Zoom session. So we're gonna go into separate Zooms and we'll look at day one deeper of the academic vocabulary routine in smaller groups. And then we come back at the very last half hour for our general session wrap up, sharing out, do a little closure, and don't forget our sign in uh, feedback form and next, next steps. Okay. All right. Take it away, so, Dave. We want to just check in with you guys. We want to make sure that we're all on the same page, um, marching together, as it were um towards the goals that we have as a division and as esl program if you're just joining us we're glad you're here what i'm going to do now is launch um a zoom quiz and you should be able to see it tell me raise your hand if you can see it can you see it on your screen all right what i want you to do is i'm going to read these out loud as you take the uh, poll to provide an additional accessibility um, the first question is true or false uh, oh, first, Vanessa, did you have a question? Oh, you're just saying yes, you can see it. All right. So number one, true or false? Days we owe a goals, our Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, um, that gives us a lot of money. Uh, they include a 5% increase in paired CASAS student tests. So one of our goals is to increase paired testing of students by 5%. The second one is true or false, um, to include a 5% increase in CASA student test learning gains. Number three, DACE is so important we typed it twice, uh, to increase our EL Civics co-app or, um, you know, um, test gains by 5%. Number four, true or false? An effective method for EL Civics instruction is for teachers to grade their own students' assessments. 
and number five, mastery learning. We've talked a lot about this, true or false. It refers to giving students clear learning goals and multiple chances to achieve them with consistent rubric and feedback. All right, so I'm gonna give you about 15 more seconds. Choose true or false for each of the five questions. We have 80%, 87% answered, 94% on the early ones. Let's see if we can get at least 95% of everybody answering all the questions. The first one is our goal 5% increase in paired CASAS tests. Number two, 5% increase in CASAS test learning gains. Number three, 5% increase in EL Civics co op tests gains. Four, are we trying to encourage teachers to grade their own students' EL Civics assessments? And number five, to have a mastery learning approach in which we give students multiple chances with clear objectives to um, improve with a rubric and a good feedback. So we're 100%, you guys rock. Let us go ahead and end the poll and see what the results say. Okay, so you can see the results, what people said. Number one, most people, 90% said true, and that is correct. We're trying to increase 5%, not only in number one, but also number two, the learning gains for the testing. Most of you got that. Number three, also for our EL Civics. And then there's um, number four. Yes, we are really encouraging us as teachers of our own students to see how they're doing, to grade their own scores of their EL Civics rather than have someone else do it and then report it to us because that way we can target our instruction better. And number five, Yes, yeah. we want to do the mastery learning approach. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing and get back into our screen. You guys did great. Very impressive on that. Um, so let us go ahead and make this bigger. Okay, we answer the questions and just to kind of remind you, five, five, five. That's the big one. We're really trying to also, number three, create a better understanding of what it takes for adults to read better as English learners um, and use this mastery learning approach because we don't want to do a one and done. We want to give students lots of opportunities with really clear understanding of what it is to be a good reader um, in another language um, rather than just keep reading and you'll get better. Okay. All right. So it's what you see on the bottom is a graphic for mastery learning. Okay. Let's move us on. So why we have those five things, how are we gonna do this? Well, first of all, we've created a RAS, a reading mastery learning rubric. It's like our student score sheet, um, but it's not just for speaking and writing, it includes reading and listening. And we're focusing this year on reading. And it also includes our CASAS results reports. We really wanna start looking at those once we start using the new tests, because when we know how students are doing, we can, we can um, target our instruction better and help them have specific goals that they know what they're doing, not just some mysterious thing they're just trying to do better somehow. Also, we are gonna plan for, calendar, and communicate better about our CASAS with our students. We gotta do it early, we gotta do it often, and we gotta do it visibly. Our adult students are busy. They need reminders just like we do, and this really helps us all when we give them to them. And finally, whoops. I guess that's, I changed that. Just those two main things. That's how we're going to do this work. And of course, we're doing it through the training. And the first part of this training is monitoring results. I want to go a little deeper with you as we talk about some information that some of you know and some of you don't. And so let's, since we have this time of being ESL program together, let's look at it. First of all, what you see on the screen is a guideline. On the top middle on the left side, it says guideline 105. And this is something you may or may not have heard of. Basically, it's kind of like a legal thing for education, adult education, and you can see it, it's being revised in red, March 1st. And why are we revising a guideline? Well, first of all, what is the guideline? You can see it's about the criteria for completion. How do our students complete and promote to the next level? Well, something's changed. We have a new CASAS reading test and listening test. Some schools are starting to use that as well. So we need to change um, the scoring, the passing score, especially for level six. So just to let you know that, that this is an official thing that's being rolled out, um, that we are 
going to send out more officially, but I want to let you guys know that we are um, trying to make sure that we have all of our ducks in a row for compliance with assessment. Any questions about that? It's just kind of one of those little legal things that I wanted you guys to know about that this is official across the district. Any comments, concerns? Do you like, great, another legal thing, just what I needed. Now what you really want and what you care about are the um, score sheets. I get it, I'm the same way. So I want to let you know that we have updated the score sheets and you can see in the red circles, what? You can see that there, the new score sheet has CASAS logo on it in three places at the very top and also where we show the reading and listening passing scores. These passing scores have been updated, okay? So <clears throat> you might not know what the old scores are and it might not look like anything fancy down there. It just looks like same as it used to, but you can see that each um, trimester version of our courses, the A and B for levels one through three have different passing scores. And you can see there's about a, um, a gap uh, between mm, say six to 10 between those. Nothing that you have to memorize or know. I just wanna make you aware of this. Um, that the score sheets are changing, okay? Dave? Yeah. I'm looking on, the, on my wall at the previous scores, <laughs> and actually some of, the, some of the passing scores are actually a bit lower for the lower levels. Yeah, but, so thank yeah, you, that's Susan. Interesting. Yes, that's... So you'll wanna be aware of this when uh, you're promoting your students or retaining them, or should we say for the when upper they... Levels as well, for the upper levels as well, sorry. Yeah, yeah, they're all different. So wow. as, a, as a school based ESL program, you guys will want to talk about this at your department meetings and just make sure that everyone's aware of it. If you can help spread the word, that'd be great. Okay. Is that only for the new tests? Yes. If you are not using the new tests yet, you're just using the old score sheet that doesn't have the CASAS logo. Okay. Right. So we'll be like for level one is 210. Yeah. Judy, you're on it. I love it. Well, I, it's, I, yeah, we're, we're all on it. We know that. <laughs> all right. Let's move on if that's okay. So okay. let's talk real quickly about this rubric. You know that we had created a new one for reading and listening. And then we, based on your feedback, we came up with three refinements, one for literacy, one for beginning low, beginning high maybe, and then traditional one for the highest, higher levels. So what we're going to focus on today, big picture here, we're focusing on the before strategies. This score sheet is based on reading comprehension before students read, during the time they're reading, and then after the reading. So we're focusing here uh, in our COP on before strategies, in particular, the first two. And these have to do with accessibility and vocabulary. Now, a lot of you guys said, well, pff, students can see and hear what they're trying to read. And some of you said, that's pretty obvious. But we beg to differ. We think that's not so true. And we think if you think about it and talk to your colleagues, as you will do briefly. Um, that you'll notice that this is something to talk about because accessibility is important. If someone can't see or hear the reading or the audio of the reading, they're not going to be able to comprehend it, right? And then the second thing is vocabulary. We're spending a lot of time on vocabulary because you asked for it and our students asked for it. Okay, so let's talk first about accessibility. I'm gonna um, turn it over to Bob. Bob, if you can unmute and let it, us have it. Okay, so like Dave mentioned, a lot of people think, hey, it's Captain Obvious, accessibility. Yes, they can see the text, but really we need to think about and consider everything if our students um, are getting blocked because of the classroom layout um, can they see or hear the text based on if you're playing it um, audibly um, and what might you do if you find students who cannot hear or see or they need support so let's go into breakout rooms of three people just for a few minutes and discuss and i will put these um, questions in the chat right now all right, so the rooms are open. We'll see you guys in about three minutes. Back, you guys. So I'm going to share the screen, and Bob is going to kind of hear from you what you thought, and we'll kind of wrap up this section on accessibility. Let's let's see the screen. All right. So, in your breakout rooms, um, 
what did you guys think? How did you know? Uh, how do you know if students can or can't see or hear the text on the board or in their books or on their phones or on a handout? Go ahead and type it in the chat. Or you could just talk out loud. Kevin, you want to talk real quick? Well, my students use Chromebooks, level two and level three. Um, so I literally, I put everything on the Chromebook, even like whenever we have conversations questions. Um, everything is done and literally is done in Schoology. And so I've taught them how to adjust the font and adjust the sizing on the, on the Chromebook. So they, so when they um, are having, like if the print is smaller, mm -hmm. then they can make it bigger, things like that. Now, Beautiful. what I have done, what I've also done, because I'm I'm now taking a class at Texas Tech University through because of this contract, um, but I've learned to look at there's an accessibility function in within Schoology where you can click on it and you'll see see if it needs to be accessible. You need to make it accessible. In other words, you need to make the font bigger, or you need to change the color of the font, etc. And so um, I've really I've really uh, I have implemented that into my Schoology classroom. So when awesome. they're, and then, and then of course, when they take CASAS tests, because they, they have Chromebooks, they actually take the CASAS test on their Chromebook. So they've been using it for a while. Good. And then they, and then I'm also teaching them how to like, if they needed to adjust the font up or down or whatever they're I've taught them how to do that as well. Perfect. So good accessibility features through tech. Thank you, Kevin. If you look in the chat, you can see all kinds of great ways. Just they tell you they teacher, I can't see it or they don't tell you and they look confused. Some of you in the chat were saying they have the confused look. Some block the views of others. So physically you got to move. I think Gemma mentioned someone moves to the front of the class. Um, our writing is it's too small or unclear. They don't respond, you know, it's just extra time is, is being spent before they can answer nor like, you know, it's a little bit longer lag time you're noticing. So there's lots of ways we can see that our students are not seeing it correctly or, or the best way that they can. And yeah, just the squinting. Quick, yeah, real quick, Bob, also, because we just wanted to call this out because like Bob said, it seems like, well, it's obvious, but our students are very, many of them come from traditional backgrounds where they don't advocate for themselves. You know, the teacher knows best. And so we really want to be proactive even. We're busy with handouts or papers or whatever, but this first step is really critical. So just exactly. think about that and, and we'll think about what you guys are already doing now to address it. Good. So what might you do if you find students can't hear or see and they need support? And I think we could probably continue with the slide because people have been mentioning both solutions and the problems yeah, thing, let them choose their seats go ahead someone yes it's kathy one hey, thing kathy. that I, I do i have a tv in the center and two whiteboards so sometimes or actually almost all the time i write things on both boards beautiful <laughs> give them a choice give them a choice i love it choose their seats um yeah exactly both individual books front of room display there you go and I like Dave's idea of extra reading glasses. I know sometimes I'll forget mine and, you know, I can't see anything. So same thing for our students, have some extras available. John Church, thank you. Have them tell you, have a nice open dialogue. Teacher, I can't see or, you know, turn it on or off. Hard of hearing, control the audio players and make sure, yeah, earbuds. You know, we have all these devices, but we should be giving everyone earbuds so that they can listen clearly and in private, instead of a cacophony of people trying to listen to something on their phones at the same but time. You're talking about when they are on their phones to like what, listening. using Schoology, for example. Exactly. And yeah, my classes just got earbuds when we went to the computer lab, so they could be doing that and doing like in class practicing with Burlington and things. Yeah, and right yeah, at their own pace and yeah, not distracted by all the other noises. So they have clear, comprehensible input. Uh, Luis, you had something? Yeah, I, I just wanted to mention two things. Number one, we need to destigmatize uh, if people cannot see to say, you know what, I can't see, I need help uh, or loss of hearing. That's number one. And number two, to inform students that the district in each, actually in every site, there's an office uh, for disability services, where they will provide um, 
audio assistance as well as uh, uh, help for those that are vision impaired. Mm -hmm. And good comments in the chat. Uh, thumbs up, thumb down uh, from Kevin. Let them show you yes or no. And um, Ed had a good thing, the pacing of the instructions. So make sure you are slowing down when you're giving instructions instead of throwing that car in a you know, fifth gear and taken off, go slowly, ramp it up, and then let them get into the activity. But make sure those instructions are clear and slow. Good stuff. Yeah, I All just right. saw there, some people said, take a photo. That's my students do that too, especially because I teach level one and beginning literacy, it's combined. So they can't write fast enough a lot of times mm -hmm. so that they could put it, take a photo or pinch it out and see it. And then they can copy it later. Yeah, imagine this tech Visual. skills, take a photo, screenshot, pinch out, swipe, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, take a photo, last longer. And uh, in Schoology, the immersive reader. Yes. Yeah. Oh God, I love uh, that. Beautiful. Everything, yeah. Thanks, Judy. Judy. You, sure, you surely get it. Um, and we have a lot of seniors in our classes or people who are not seniors. Um, and and there's, there's no stigma. We all need it. It's universal design. What helps people who have good eyesight will help, or people who don't have good eyesight will help us all, right? So let us move on. We talked about the first most important thing in, in, in the before strategies for comprehension, and that's accessibility. Now we're going to talk about, for the rest of our time, vocabulary and using direct explicit instruction. Students, if they were good at learning how to read on their own, they would probably have done it. That's why we need to step in and give them direction and be really explicit about the strategies that we're using. So let's talk about this. I want you to just kind of get back in this mindset of vocabulary instruction. We spent a lot of time last time together on this. So in the chat, what word or words do you think of when you th uh, think about vocabulary instruction? What are one to five words or a sentence? What comes to mind? What jumps to your mind first? Oh, thank you, Pilar, for the notes about um, Burlington's highlighter. Great, you guys. Thanks, John. Thanks, Bertha. Okay, so now, what do you think of when you think of all right, good. People are starting to load up there. Flashcards. Meaning, uses, visuals. Good. Yeah, meaning is the most important thing, especially when it comes to reading test taking. Not spelling. Not, not spelling. They don't they need to spell the word so when they're in a reading test, okay? So that should be a very last kind of gamified thing we should do. Syllables, exposure. Yeah, they do need to know how to read it. Better comprehension, word walls, ooh, like syllables, yeah. visuals. Thank you, Dr. James. Be clear and make the pace work for our students. Beautiful, nice, good stuff, you guys. All of Stressed these things, syllables. All of these things from Ooh, John Church. Thank you. Word families. Nice. So you guys have been doing this since wow. day one, and you have a lot of great ideas. So what we're going to do is really focus on the presentation or what we call the introduction of these words, but not just common words. We're going to talk about academic words. So let's kind of step back a little bit and look at vocabulary. We know that we use word lists, right? We have them on our walls. We have them in our books. We have them all over the place um, online. So we know that we have them already, but we know that most of the ones in our ESL books, Bob and I were just looking at one textbook today and we didn't see anything that was beyond common words such as book, teacher, eat. Um, what we're really focusing on now is these really important words um, that are part of instructions and assessments. These are what gives students success. They're confident because they know these important words that direct them to um, take a test or to do activities in class. So we call these words what? Academic words, okay? Academic. And why are they important? Okay, feel free to type into the chat. Why are these so important? I kind of gave you some hints. What did you hear me say? Or what else do you know about the importance of academic words? Where do our students find them? Why do they need them? Okay, yeah. Andy, thank you for stating it. This is a big reason why we're having this COP. 
we're trying to be ready for the new CASA steps class, uh, test. Actually, this is great. Tests, job applications, um, academic, our textbooks, great. Okay, people, we use these words to understand what we're gonna do and how to organize our thinking. So again, like you said, it's the language of the classroom and workplace instructions. If our students get jobs, but they can't understand the law or the tasks or the instructions are being given, it might not last very long. So it's also, like you said, it's the language of assessments. We're talking about CASAS, we're talking about EEL civics, uh, the things in your textbooks on Burlington, et cetera. It's the language of writing, okay? It's the language of organization, of hierarchy. And it's the language ultimately of power and success for our students to move and groove in adult circles, adult contexts at their children's school, at their jobs, in, at their courthouse and community organizations. Super important and they're everywhere. So let's talk about um, one thing really quickly, vocabulary in reading versus vocabulary in speaking and writing because it's not just you turn the vocabulary on or off. There's a spectrum of our knowledge of words, okay? So the thing we need to remember is that students don't need to produce words on a reading test, okay? They're not having to spell correctly. They're not having to say it. They don't have to have perfect pronunciation. It's an interpretive, receptive thing, okay? They do need to recognize the words though. And they can only do that if they can read them because they know how they sound, okay? and they know the syllabization. So we don't teach all the words the same way. So an example of this is, like I said, in a reading test, students need to understand the words and how they work with um, the other words around them. But in writing, they have to generate the word. They do have to spell it correctly. They do have to understand its precise meaning, okay? They have to generate the words. In reading tests, they don't. So our instruction needs to be careful because these are some challenging words, many of them, but we don't have to focus on students spelling or pronouncing them, um, in, especially right away. Over time, they will because we're gonna recycle them. It'll just happen naturally, but we don't have to make that the focus of our instruction. I hope that's clear. Does that make sense? Do you guys have any questions or concerns about that? It kind of yeah, takes this is the really load important, off. you guys. Yeah. It takes the load back a little bit from this. Okay. All right. So we're not talking about like those basic content words that they have, you know, the book, sky, blue. This is academic words. These are different. Okay. okay. Let's continue. Thanks, Bob. All right. So a little bit more about vocabulary with this idea of direct and explicit instruction. It needs a teacher or a, someone who knows a little bit more to be direct with students and to make things clear. There's no mystery here. This is what makes for good reading. Let's talk about it, let's do it together and then you can own it and do it yourself. So we're gonna have you look at a checklist. I'll show you in just a minute. In breakout rooms, you're gonna discuss the checklist as a group of teachers. You may have done all these strategies. How exactly did you implement them? Or maybe you say, mm, I haven't done this. What, what would be a good way to do this? So please, once um, we give you this link for the checklist, have one person in your group share the screen. Everybody should be looking at the same screen to make this accessible and a better conversation, right? Um, here are your instructions. You're gonna review and discuss the strategies. And again, share what you have used. If so, how have you used them? And if not, what questions or concerns do you have about using these strategies? Let me escape here and show you this checklist really quickly. I'll orient it to you, you to it. It's a one pager, okay? It's, I think, six different items. There are some links. Don't worry about the links right now. Don't get lost in, and distracted by those. Just look at the main things. Number one, number two, number three. So again, these are the strategies. I do wanna highlight for you giving the students the meanings versus having them look them up. That's kind of a no-no. We have adults, they're already behind in their learning of English, maybe, and they're just given the words. It's not about them finding the words. Dictionary skills can be important, but for the most part, we give them a meaning and their goal is to understand it 
and use it, okay? I'm gonna let you read the rest on your own. We're gonna give you guys about seven minutes to go as a group. Let me give you the link, unless someone already has it ready. I'll just give it to you here. And you're gonna go into the, um, the, the breakout rooms and discuss. What have you used, if so, how? And then if you haven't, what questions do you have? So let me go ahead and put this in the chat unless somebody already did, did you? Not yet. Okay, so here's the checklist link. You may be, I'm gonna have you guys go in the same, same groups, okay? Are there any questions before we break out into the rooms? Everyone's clear on the task? All right, I'll see you later. We'll take about seven minutes. Dave, can you put me in a group? <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Hi, who's that? Dina? Myra. Did you just, did, did you just yes, Myra? Did you, yes. Did you just I arrive? Just Sorry you. about that. Yeah. Hang it's on okay. a sec. I don't see you. Give me a minute. Oh, there you are. I'll yeah. put you in room one. Thank can you. you. Can you put me in the, in a room two, please? Hi, who is that? This is Ana Herrera. Hi, Anna, I don't see you. Sorry. Let me find you. Okay. Maybe because I, I didn't fill out the, the registration. It's okay. No worries. I got gotcha. you. Thank you. And uh, Dave, also Jose Navarro. Hi, Jose. I'll put you in a room, too. Here you go. Thank you. Dina, can you see the um, breakout rooms at the bottom of your screen so you can um, join one? I'm going to add you to one. There you go. Hey, Dave. Yeah. Zoom put me and Bob in the same breakout room. Could you, could you send me to another one? Sure. Do you want to go to one? Sure. All right. Let me find you. What room were you in? I think it was 16. Okay. Let me find you. All right. I'm moving you to room 15. Stretch on. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had interesting, successful conversations about the strategies. Let's wait for everybody to come back into the room. All right, I think we're here. Welcome back, guys. I hope that was, um, like I said, um, 
interesting. I hope it reflected things that you may already have done or things that you'd like to try. Uh, any epiphanies, any, um, you know, new understandings or reaffirmations of what you already do? I'll take a moment or two to let people share if they'd like to. Uh, Dave, I had a question. Yes, Jay. Um, you know, you were telling us, that giving us the definition or explaining the difference between academic words. I'm just curious, is, do you think that would be important to identify for students as well? Why not? Not, not only the list, but I mean, maybe it's too sophisticated a concept, but the difference between. I think that's a lovely idea because we want students to know that we're doing maybe doing something different and these words are important for the test and that's why we're spending extra time in a new way with them. You know, we're talking about direct explicit instruction. So be as explicit as you can in a student friendly level appropriate way. I love that idea. Thanks, SJ. Um, cool. Stella, take it away. To be honest with you, we were looking at the Ventures Unit 1 or Ventures 1 and I was really surprised how hard the words are because as a reading one teacher for native speakers, those are not words that I would necessarily be teaching. Right. So you're seeing the new rigor, right? And that's the same thing as also going up for our native speakers. The thing is how many words and how, we, how, uh, how quickly do we do it? So you're going to make those decisions as with your experience, you know, maybe you only do one word a week for the beginners and they do a, use it a lot. It's really, that's where we'll talk about these strategies we're going to work on today. And you bring in your professional discretion and knowledge of your students to really see what's appropriate, right? And not every word is, you know, certain words are going to be better than others. So. Let's talk about that in your level groups. Um, I want to give you guys, get you guys into that. But um, thanks, Stella, for raising that concern. Any other thoughts um, about the strategies? Did, did you feel like, yeah, we do these? Or, ooh, that's one I haven't done yet. Any thoughts? Raise your hand if you used a few of those strategies already. How many of you can raise your hands to say, yes, I, I do, I do several. Awesome, go ahead and change that. Raise your hands if you saw a strategy that um, you think you'd like to try. All right, is there any new strategy that you wanna call out for the group that you can, or just type in the chat? Asking the students to look for the words when they leave the classroom, they go to the supermarket or their children's school. And also, I have uh, just remember that sometimes the parents bring words from their children's homework and they ask me to explain it to them. Thank you. Great, Dr. James. What else do you have? I saw Yadira had her hand up. I would agree with her. I just like using more technology to actually when we focus on a lesson, it's specific vocabulary words like the grocery store or traffic signs or whatnot. To take pictures, selfies when they're out and about as a little homework assignment and to bring it back the next day to see how, you know, they identify with it in the outside world. Thanks for sharing, Mr. Magoo. I love it, Gary. All right, guys. <laughs> um, I see some chats. There's are nice comments. You guys, great. Um, yeah, you're looking at the level one. Okay. Let's, I see that, Lorena. Um, we'll talk, we can talk about that in our level groups, um, identifying the words good on a, and, and where they saw them and all that good stuff. Examples from their own lives, super important. We have stories about that that we can share maybe another time. What I want to do now is, is focus on one type of key strategy. Once we've determined our one to five words or however many you think is appropriate for your class, what do you do? The first most important thing is introducing the word well. And we're taking all of the rest of our COP to deal with this because it's such a critical um, component. The language we use, the clarity and simplicity of language that we use, and the clarity and simplicity of the pictures, definitions, examples, and comprehension checks that we use are critical for students to more quickly get it. So let's go ahead and talk about that um, briefly as a whole group before we go into our level groups. Let me slide show this. 
We're talking about instructional routines. We're talking about a four to five day series of them and, and we're really wanting to use efficiently the limited time we have. So let's talk about it. We talked about, and you guys got a big picture understanding, even if you didn't do all of this last time, there, we had four to five days. On Monday, we present the word or we introduce it and we get an initial comprehension check. On Tuesday, we do some listening and speaking where the students use the word in simple, familiar context, really inclusive, really engaging. We do that a little bit more, but add a written piece where there's a sentence starter that includes the word and then the students show their knowledge in finishing the sentence of a simple sentence. Thursday is we find a passage from our book and then we ask a question about that with the uh, target academic language uh, word. Then if you have time on Friday, you can do something game wise or use it in a really communicative, um, relevant life task for students, okay? So this is what we talked about and this is what we will return to next time. But for now, oh, I wanna say that we are always recycling. So we're gonna find a balance today between transferable pictures, transferable meanings, and then using the words within the context for the theme of the week, but then recycling them in other themes because these are words that work across themes. So let's talk today about what we're doing. First of all, we're only doing day one, the first routine of the week, all the rest of our time together. It's the Monday routine where we introduce the word and we have a comprehension check. So what we offered you last time was this series of instructions and a template to help you work through this. We're just gonna focus today on the quadrant chart and a comprehension question. So the four parts of the quadrant chart are the picture, a very easy meaning, possibly as a known synonym. L1 stands for their first language. We're really encouraging you to let students have a moment to put the word, use their Google Translate and put the word in their first language. The research shows that's the best way to, to get understanding and to remember it. And finally, two or three sentence examples that finish with a comprehension check. So well, this is our routine for us. We're initially or individually, I'm gonna have you look at the Schoology discussion that we um, had going before this COP. Some people shared some really great comments. I want you to take a look. Then we're gonna go into small group breakouts and discuss what makes for good introduction of vocabulary. We're gonna talk about what about the picture? What about the simple single meaning? And what about the sample sentences? And then we're gonna have a whole group share out. So we're gonna take a short amount of time to do this before you go into your level ESL groups. So let me just check the chat real quickly. So, uh, yes. Delissa, no, you don't have to, yes. you don't give the students the first language meaning. They just get it for themselves. You don't have to know it. You don't have to give it to you them. You can help them, right? If they don't know how to use Google Translate or whatever, you can help them. Um, but this is really them showing their own language, what they know and the, their um, definition. And I Good would question. say that helping also includes making sure they've gotten the right part of speech. Yeah. Yep. Because it can be completely, yeah, I've been running into that a lot. Good. If you don't put two in front of it, it won't come up as a verb. You'll get a noun. And it'll be something that's way off. And, Super yeah. helpful. Very practical, mm -hmm. Judy. Thank you. And this is one example of that is the word uh, address or address. It comes mm -hmm. up in one of our level words of unit one. You'll see it, some of you. So uh, in, address is not a tier two um, academic word. That's just where you live. But to address an issue, to address a situation is, that's different. And one's a noun and one's a verb. So let's talk about um, the pictures first. The top left quadrant piece is the pictures. We need to do this. We need to make sure that the picture we choose is immediate and obvious communication of the word's meaning. It's not conceptual. It's like, boom. Once, and when students see it, it's almost 90% sure that they're gonna know it. And finally, it needs, or also, it needs to be transferable to other contexts. So us, you'll see this in just a minute, but we need to make sure that the picture can apply to whether they're talking about health or education or work or community or school, et cetera. Um, if you're not good at coming up with these, and many of us are not, Use the long minute dictionaries. Go to your ESL uh, teacher office and ask them for one. 
if you want to use them, these are the best ones to use. Then, we're going to talk about and see if you can um, determine which of the two pictures we're going to show is the one that is obvious versus confusing. Let's practice choosing and looking at pictures that are obvious. So there are two pictures, number one and number two. And as you can see at the top of the screen, the word that the picture is trying to um, illustrate is indicate. Which one? Type in the chat. Number one or number two is obvious, immediate. Good, lots of number ones. Okay, so most people are saying number one. Is there a 99 reason? Ninety-nine percent one. Is there a reason why number two might not be obvious? Why it might be confusing? Anybody can can call that out. It's not bad, but it's just not the most obvious. I love no, that it's representative of our some of our students. Who can tell us why it might not be the greatest choice? She's not indicating anything. She's in a blank space, and right. it'd be nice if there was an object that she was pointing to. Good. Indicate should indicate something. Great. Yeah. Let's look at another example. Good job, you guys. How about this one? Which picture is obvious? Number one or number two? <laughs> purchase. The word is purchase. The word is purchase. Let me fix the screen real quick. Okay. Which one is obvious? Type one or two. Okay. Again, we're seeing lots of ones. Good. Why might number two not be obvious or not what's the problem it's we were looking for two things obvious and transferable so mm -hmm. is this transferable to a different context would we use this word for school or for work or for family not so much let's look at another one which one is more obvious or compare one or two for the word thank you for the word compare now we know there is a little bit of a cultural bias in this. <laughs> this might be a chance to teach um, an American expression. But which one is general? Let's see what you guys are saying. Number yeah, one is more one. obvious, right? Number two, there you can compare many flags, but that's a lot of, it's almost TMI, right? And it's about international, it's about flags, it's about countries. It might not be as obvious. And again, transferable. Okay, so that's the picture. Good stuff, you guys. So we're good. To, Lisa mentioned, yeah, one is better, but not the best. So yeah. good yeah. observation. Good. And comparatives are usually two objects. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Nicely said, ESL teacher. All right. Let's look at another component here. <laughs> the second part is. Oh, this word is benefit. Which one is transferable versus too specific? The word is benefit. Which one is a more transferable picture across different themes and topics? Mm. Wow. Not as clearly. Hmm. I like that, Margie. Okay, so some of you said two. Listen to this sentence and see if that picture works for it. What are the benefits of this solution over that solution? What are the benefits of Maria's um, example versus Charlie's example? What are the benefits of the different types of governments? Okay, so the word benefits as a transferable academic word, yeah, money is not always the name of the game. I know we're in the United States, but the picture on the left, number one, is more transferable because it's not as specific to workplace. Okay. All right. Good stuff, guys. Let's look at the second part of the quadrant chart. Simple meanings. Again, we're looking for one to five words. Very short. And we want a meaning, again, that is transferable across topics. Education, health, family, all that good stuff. So. You guys have a reactions. If you look at the bottom of your screen, I think it's the bottom of your screen, uh -huh. you're going to see the more three dots all the way to the right. If you click on that, you're going to have a drop down or a lift up that says reactions. And then you're going to see, yeah, you see the thumbs up and the clapping hands, but you also see the green check mark, which is a positive, and the 
red X, which is a negative. So let's have you use those. We should be able to see it. Bob is mod um, modeling. You can see in the top left corner of his picture. Make sure you have your gallery view on, guys. Which, um, which do you think that this were, uh, definition or this meaning to buy is a short, relevant, transferable um, definition? To buy, is that transferable? Show us, let's see, green check or red X is to buy a transferable, short, relevant definition or meaning. Lots of green checks. I'm seeing some green checks. If you're not sure how to do that, just put a thumbs up or a thumbs down. We can go low tech. Beautiful. All right. So that's a really great definition. It's a short, simple, transferable definition. Let's look at the screen and see another example. Next one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Benefits. Yeah. We have two words, advantages and rewards for benefits. But which one, how can we? For both of those, advantages and rewards, do you think that is simple and transferable? Is it student-friendly language? Kind of depends the ESL level, I know. I thought you were asking between the two. No, but... both of them together. When we use both of those, there are two examples. I'm not um, sure what you mean. Are you saying both benefits yeah. and rewards would be so good? The word is benefits, and the teacher is choosing the words advantages and rewards yeah. as simplest, clearest, most transferable um, meaning. Do you agree? Thumbs up green check, or do you say, no, you could probably yeah. choose something simpler. Does somebody have an example of something simpler and transferable? Um, Judy, I bet you do. You're ESL one. Uh, I just was thinking pluses. Uh, they actually know that. Um, and I don't know. Mm -hmm. Good things. Yeah. yeah, good things. I thought of the same thing. Good things. Yeah. Good things. People and get that. Okay, great. Let's move on to another one. So this is just kind of exposure. We could have a longer conversation, but we're not. How about the word compare? We have the verb compare, and then we have the two words to help with the meaning same, different. What do you think? Green check, red X. Is that short and transferable? Let's look at the gallery. Compare. Okay, so we know that compare is a verb and we know that same and different are not, but do they help work for students? Okay, we're maybe not gonna all agree on this one and we're not gonna take the time to come to agreement. The point is we wanna raise your awareness when we choose the simple words for the simple meaning. Again, what's the repeated word? Simple transferable across themes and student friendly. So just keep those in mind because when you do this work in your leveled Zoom rooms, you're gonna have a checklist that you're gonna keep reminding you of that. So you're gonna work as a team to do that. And when we visit your breakout rooms, we'll kind of check in and say, mm, is that the simplest one you could do? Okay, great guys, let's keep going. All right, let us talk about the third part, L1 is a fancy way to say first language. Again, we're not gonna do anything with this and you don't have to fill it in like this team did. You can just say, hey, guys, here's the word. It's a verb. Take out your Google Translate and find it and write it in. Okay, moving on. Last one, with two parts really, it's the last quadrant, it's the sample sentence or sentences and a comprehension check. So we wanna make sure it's this at this point it's contextualized for our theme for the week. Are we talking about school? Are we talking about work? Are we talking about family? Are we talking about shopping? Okay, so this at this point, it's contextualized. So let's look. The word is identify. Do you think that this is contextualized? What is this contextualized for? I identify my shoulder. I can identify body parts and problems. I can identify where the pain is when doctor asks me. 
What is the context? What is the, the contextualization? Go ahead, Dina. Oh, health. Great. So it's very specific uh, for yeah. health. Now, the next week in class, we might be talking about, mm, I don't know, emergencies. And we can say, identify the safety exit, identify the stairs, identify the hot door, right? But for this week, it's all about this unit, okay? Or this topic, sorry. And then we have a comprehension check question. Can you identify your throat? This needs to be a question that every student can answer, and maybe it's a TPR for our ESL one. Maybe for a high level, can you identify the best place in the room for you to do silent reading? You know, it, it can be different for different levels and for different contexts. Okay, so two parts. The last quadrant has sample sentences and a comprehension check question. Let us move on. Here you go. Here are sample sentences. Again, use your reactions. Are the sentences short, personal, relevant to students, and transferable? Ready? The word is indicate for work. Look at these sentences. Their context is work. So indicate one requirement for this position. Indicate what position you are applying for. Indicate the hours you can work. Green check, red X, thumbs up, thumbs down. Are these good example sentences? Indicate stuff for work. Yeah, I see lots of greens, awesome. Let's move on. All right, comprehension check. This is again the word indicate and the work context is work. Indicate by raising your hand if you work. Okay, so we can ask the class, indicate by raising your hand if you work. How about if you're looking for work? Can you indicate by raising your hand? Indicate if you're looking for work. Okay. Oh, it's funny. The Zoom automatically raises my hand when I raise my hand. <laughs> and then type in the chat. Can you think of other uses of indicate in a work context? So how else you could use indicate in a work context with your student? Any ideas? Let's check the chat. How can you use ask students a comprehension check question with the word indicate? Any ideas? Anybody want to unmute? Share? Ah, Luis. Oh. Ah, Donna. Indicate availability. Okay. Mm -hmm. Show or demonstrate. So indicate where you left materials. That's a work related sentence. Good. And it has to be something that they can, students can show, right? All right. I think you guys get the idea. We want to have pictures and meanings that are transferable, but we want the um, sample sentences to be related to the topic of the week or the weeks and have a comprehension check that's either a question that they speak to a partner where everyone has to answer or some kind of TPR that the teacher can see everyone gets it. We want to make sure it's just an initial check on, on day one. Are we good with day one? Let us get, I'm going to give you a little Dave, information. Dave, I have a question yeah. for transferable. Can we, um, can you give me another description of what transferable means when we're talking about? It means you can use it in another context. So. I can, if I'm using the word indicate for work, indicate the place on the, on the application where you put your, your experience. That's another one work be. Indicate where you worked before. Indicate your skills in this section. So now we can I, transfer it from theme to theme. From theme to theme, because you okay. can see it on tests related to all different reading passages with different themes. Okay, I wanna get you guys moving on. Let me, share screen and give you a little prep in the work. doctor's office indicate where it yeah. hurts yes 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 thank you thank you beautiful <laughs> and even on rental applications or applying for apartments <laughs> yep beautiful all right so this is i'm going to give you a quickie and then when you go into your level zoom rooms you're going to get more details this is what you're going to do for the rest of our time today you're going to be in with teachers who teach the same level or a similar level and once you get there, you're going to get some more detailed instructions from your facilitator, and then they're going to put you in small groups. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to the academic vocabulary list for your section, for your level. 
So let's say I'm going to be working with level two. And here is that list we shared last time. Now it is, give me a second. I need to make sure all this stuff comes up on the screen here. On the left, can you see um, there's this little table of contents. I love this because we set it up so you can just jump to the topical use of these words. And then you can jump to the quadrant charts, which are on the same document. And we have given you three more examples for the first three words of the topic. So tip, check, and understanding. We have done the first three, and then you're going to do some more. So there's a picture. Again, we wanted it simple and clear. We, you've got the meaning. You've got, we did an example of this. You wouldn't have to do this. Let students do it themselves. And finally, two or three sentences and a comprehension check question. Some of the comprehension check questions you will notice on your version might have a parenthetical um, section, and that's to differentiate for higher level students. Okay? So there are three, I'm going to scroll, you'll see it. there are three done as examples, more examples. Then there are more. Okay, so the next one's one of the groups in my small group, level two, is going to do column, one will do row, and one will do objective, and then I'm going to put some blank ones, whoops, for us to do more. We want to see how many, whoa, we want to see how many of these we can crank out, you guys, in our time together, because the more we do together, the more support we have to do it, and the more fun it is, and the more we don't have to do it on our own, okay? So that's the goal. I'm going to um, go back to sh sharing and tell you that the last piece is the checklist. You are going to use this. One of the people in your group is going to be the quality control person who is going to have this checklist and make sure that is the word from the academic word list, is the picture all the things that we said before, obvious, transferable, and is it another thing we didn't say, is it representative of our students? Are there eight white people in the picture? Okay, basically, we probably want to avoid that. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Are the meanings simple, short, and transferable? Are the simp um, can we, are we giving just a moment for students to, to put their own language? Are the sample sentences personal, friendly, student friendly, and related to the topic? And then we have a comprehension check that's simple, inclusive, and allows students to show their knowledge. So I'm going to just actually put this into the chat right now, unless somebody already did. I'll just do it now. So everybody go ahead and grab this. And then we're going I'll to put, put in the folders, OK, Dave? OK, great. So, so Dave's have... putting in the checklist link that he, that's on the screen right now. And then below that, I just put in the folders with all the academic word lists for each level. Okay. And, and just keep in new, mind that when you open up the academic word lists, uh, you're going to have to make a copy of that word list. You won't be able to edit on our master copy, okay? So you have to make a copy to actually work on it. No, they're actually able, oh. Right? Yeah, I thought I made them all editors, but you know what? If you can't type into it yet, just make a copy. Um, that's one thing I forgot to check. But the point is, you're going to go into level groups. Let me mm -hmm. share the screen. You can see you're going to be going to a different room to, to about half of our people. Um, let's look at that again. And Bob, can you put the links for ESL 1 literacy and ESL 4 through 6? Yes. If you're ESL 2 and 3, you're going to stick around with me and Francisco. If you're working with literacy in level 1, Bob and Sophia and Dr. James, you're going to go to that different Zoom room. And then you also four through six, you're going to go with Margie and Suzette. And then we'll all come back together about 3.30 to just share out. Ed has his hand raised. Yeah, what's up, Ed? All right. I just wanted to know if the words, the vocabulary list was the one you said last time. I just wanted to know the vocabulary list. Was that the one you it's said last time? It's the same list as last ah, okay. time. We've changed right. it a little bit. We want to have everything in one place. So they're alphabetized first, then they're by topics, which we think is a great way to do it. And then we All have right. the quadrant charts. 
All so right, does great. everybody know where you're headed? No. Oh. No, I'm I, look at the chat. Well, essentially, I, you're saying that um, because you changed it a little bit, this is Janet, you changed it. Then what, if we downloaded it the last time, then we need to download the new one because there's a change. Yes. Right. Okay, thanks. Yep. And is it is it in the uh, Schoology or is it in uh, Google? Right Google now Drive. it's in Google, but all you need to know right now is that you click on the link when you get to your level Zoom room. Your, your facilitator of your group will give you the link and we'll share you'll be again. good to go. Yes, thank you, Margie. Please start your videos when you get back to your level Zoom room. Let's get more communal. Can, Let's enjoy each other a little bit more and can, have a little more fun. Can, can you post I'm, those links again? Sorry. They're in the chat. Oh, Click they're on in the your chat. chat and you can go. So save it, you guys. Save if you're going to ESL Literacy or One. Grab it. Say goodbye to us and then go put that in your browser and go to your other one. We'll see you at 3.30. Thanks, everybody. Yes, please leave for your leveled Zoom rooms, Andy and everyone. I'm lucky I don't have to leave. <laughs> so if you're, if you're here, you're, with front, you're stuck with Francisco and me, and um, okay. we're going to do level two and three. We only had a few people who are level three, so we're all going to work together on the level two word list and the quadrant charts. And guess what? If you're level three, you're just going to help us um, help us with level two and get the idea for working on level three another time. All right. I'm going to just share the screen again, and we'll give you a little bit more detail, and then we're going to get into it. We know you guys are ready to go. So we're going to work until about 3.20. We're going to check in with you guys, and then we're going to go to the, we're going to say, let's get ready for the other people to rejoin us again because they're all going to be coming back to our room. So let's go a little deeper with our instructions. Again, you should have the academic mm -hmm. vocabulary words from the folder for level two. Raise your hand if you were able to, to get level two word list from the chat. No? No. I am going to give it to you again. Actually, let me just give it to you this way. Chat. Okay, so this is love. This is the folder for all levels, and then you're going to click on level two. Okay? okay, someone please click on that and tell me if it's working for you. Anybody click on it? Do you see yeah. the folder and then you click on level two? Yes, uh, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. Natalia. Yes. Did you yes. get it? Yes, yes, good. I'm getting some yeses. So uh, you need that. Dave, what? could you please send again uh, the link for the ESL level one and literacy? Oh, you need the, um, yeah, just a second. Let me go to the chat. Let me get that shit. Yeah, just a sec. Sorry, no, just a second, Natalia. Sorry, guys, hang in there with me. You're going to join Bob and... Dave, I Thank just put so it much. in the chat. Okay, awesome. So it should be there now, Natalia. Thanks, Francisco. Yeah. Whoops. All right. Sophia, I'll email it to you. Well, all right, let me get back to what our instructions are. So your goal is to do two things. You're going to complete at least one effective vocabulary introduction quadrant chart, just like I modeled to you. Okay, it's going to have a picture. It's going to have a simple meaning. It's going to have a chance, which we kind of don't worry about today for students to put their language. And then there's going to be some sample sentences and a comprehension check. Okay. Then you need to make sure to do this well and work efficiently. We need you to have one of three roles in your group of three people. It might be three or four. You need a techie, someone who has the list and can show the quadrant chart. So it's going to be someone who can do this. Someone who can share the, the screen, not rocket science, but and someone who is um, comfortable with writing on that. Let me make sure that you can all, I'm gonna make you guys able to edit, okay? You should be able to edit now. So you can type right into this document. 
You don't have to make a copy. We're going to work together and share this. All right, so that's one person. Then we need to have another person. Make sure that everybody contributes, not just the person typing and talking like me. No one dominates, so no hogs and no logs. Everyone share, okay? And finally, quality control. We need somebody who has that checklist and can make sure that it's a good um, quadrant chart that we're creating. Okay, any questions about what we're gonna do now? Let me see, I think I might have had another slide for you. Okay, if you finish early, if you say, you know what, I love our quadrant chart, and I've got another 40 minutes, guess what? Do more, okay? <laughs> do more. The more we do together, the more fun and the more work we have to use with our students without having to do it on our own time. And then, if you really have more time, how about one of the persons in your small group pretends you're the teacher and presents the word to the students, okay? Start making this real so you, when you get back to work on Monday, you can do it. Okay, I'm gonna pause. Does everyone know? So when you get there, someone shares the screen, get your techie, and then someone has a checklist and, there, and someone says, let's go, all right? You good to go? I'm going to create breaker rooms. How many of us are there? There are 22. So did you already create these? No, I'm going to recreate these. Let's see how many people we can get. Three to four people. Yeah. All right. I'm going to create them. And then you're going to look at your clock. It's 223. Let's take an hour. Actually, about till 320. 320 to work on as many quadrant charts as we can. OK, are we good? Say yes. Do something. Act alive. Yes. Hey, okay. And, yeah. and Francisco and I will bounce around and check in, okay? Hey, All right. Dave. Yes, sir. In the chat, I put the, the link to the checklist if anyone needs it. Awesome. How did you get that? You got it. So once you Wait, get into I your group, somebody's got to have that one. checklist. All right. I'm going to open the rooms. Have a great session. We'll be bouncing around to say hi. <clears throat> You're back from working with your small groups on the quadrant charts. And what did you notice? Any observations about the process? Yeah, we, we, while we were writing, somebody else was writing yeah. over okay. our quadrant. A lot of people were reaching the same conclusions. Okay, so good. <laughs> First of all, there was a tech situation that Lorena said, so when we're collaborating on a Google Doc, we need to see if there's a cursor already in the box and not type where that cursor is. But in terms of the, uh, the discussion, did you find that was fast and easy or did it take some time? But for me, finding the picture is what took time. I, um, I was doing on um, fees. I went to, I know I disobeyed, I went to level three because I, nobody else was doing level three. Okay. And I couldn't find like, okay, fee, yeah, I get it. No, because that could mean something else. Okay, let me look for the, oh, no, that, no, that's not clear. So that was very interesting. How many people kind of get what she's talking about? Does that, do you resonate with that? I certainly do. And I appreciate you bringing that up, Janet. I think that's why we spent the most time talking about the pictures is because we're trying to straddle two different objectives. One, we want to a picture of the word and simple meanings that apply to anything that students are talking or writing or listening about, anything in their lives, anything in the textbook. And yet, and the picture, you know, you get one chance. Thank God we have the meanings and the L1 translation and the, and the other examples. But so one hand, you're trying to find something very universal that can fit everything. And then on the other hand, we're saying we need to contextualize it so that it makes sense with what we're talking about this week in our class, our topic. So that's a big challenge, I would say. Um, and you guys are working hard to get that. I know some groups spend a lot of time talking about that picture. Richard. Yeah, and then I was going to say, too, we were talking about in the beginning about can they see it, right? You know, and then it depends. Like, if you're online, you can do some great color pictures. But then some pictures, when you try to print them out, it, you know, they, they have a really bad resolution. So then if you're making a handout, they're not going to be able to see it. So then you have to think about that too, right? Ooh, that's a really good comment. 
How, so did you guys, what, what took you the longest? Do you agree with Janet that finding the picture took the longest? Oh, mine's different. See. Finding the translation. Trying to well, be okay, you don't have to do that. So that's, oh. that's really important. That's not All your right. job. That's the one thing you did not have to do. <laughs> my God, I'm sorry. It's going to my husband who's Argentinian and getting the translation. Let the students do that. Let them the do that. The comprehension that's, that's... check question is kind of challenging. Okay, why? Yes, I agree. Why? Can you tell us why, Delissa and Margarita? Well, it's just hard to know what to what question to ask for comprehension check. So how do you make that decision? What are your criteria by which you decide? So you've got this word. You tell me. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm happy we to. Looked at the word, we looked at the word and saw and looked at the picture and then make sure that whatever the word correlated with the picture so that they comprehend what they were going to write about. Okay, let me clarify because this is where Delisa, Delisa is asking, asking for some guidance. So the picture is universal. But the questions are not universal. Those are tied to your week's topic. So what, let's talk about an actual thing. What was the word and what was the topic for the week? So what was the word you chose? Are you asking Me? anybody? No, I'm asking Delisa and Margarita. Me? Which one I'm Delisa, actually. Delisa, sorry, Delisa. Yeah. So what was, what was the word? Uh, well, we did several. I think we did four or five words. Okay, so choose one. Let's let's get. Uh, okay, participate. Okay, so participate was your academic word, and what was and you had some kind of picture. You had a meaning, and you were working with the sample sentences. What did the sample sentences and what did the comprehension check, comprehension check have to? Which topic? What, when you looked at the unit, and the blocks. I what can't was remember the right now. Oh, I see, that's remember. critical. That's everything. So um, can let's you see. repeat? repeat that dave uh, let's I'm find it the... let's find it okay <clears throat> what level is it <clears throat> elisa what level two level two okay so let's look for your participate um dave can you repeat what you said about I'm, i will just let me find oh, the picture i'm She's sorry talking. i'll take it that's it so there's participate so and your school pitch... services Okay, so the picture, I'll be honest with you, it's, it looks like school to me. It doesn't look like participate. Um, it looks like school or science class. So we might need to have a little more conversation about that. I think it's what Janet was talking about, right? Um, Sorry, but I'm not hearing you. The picture, the yeah. most obvious thing to me, and I'm curious what other people think is school or science class. I don't okay. see participate. But oh, yeah. one, one student is raising their hand. Okay, so but your question really is about the comprehension check. So let me scroll a little bit down. Yeah. So this is about school. So yeah, um, everyone should participate in class. Our objective is 100% class participation. So this is really nicely connected to school actions for our students, right? So what are some different ways to participate in class? Yeah. Group, group, cooperative. How do you participate in a group in school? Um, how do you participate as a parent at your child's school? How do you want others to participate in your group? So you have something that you need specific information for students to give examples. So when we have those comprehension checks, students need to show it by pointing or touching, or they need to give you a specific example. So thank you for asking this question, Delisa, because you're helping us remember, it's about a specific example, okay, that everyone can answer. So Dave, would it help if we had, if they put a circle around the boy raising his hand? Because I thought that picture was great for participate. Because you show the boy raising his hand, would it help to circle the boy? What do you guys think? I think that's a great idea, but what do I, you guys think? I agree. I think that would help a lot. Because Ooh. I don't, I wasn't focusing on him. I just saw a group of students listening to a lecture by a science teacher, I thought, because she had some bubbly but, the, but then she made a good point. She said, well, he's raising his hand. But it doesn't I, stand I, out that much. Right. 
So you're saying that it would be really helpful if we did something like, I'm not really good at this, but something like this. Yeah. With an arrow. Arrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, to, to single him out more, because otherwise he kind of blends in. And no actually, offense. With, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. And actually, we have the circle. We also can ask the question, who is participating? Okay. Something, yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, I think uh, I think uh, maybe more verbal um, interaction in the picture. You know, if you see the picture and they, you know, someone is raising a hand, it's like what what he's doing or what is she's doing. I guess. So yeah, I mean, there's different ways to find participate. Um, so, and also you notice that sometimes they're children. So a, a lot of times I will do adults and sometimes I will say diverse. So it's more representative of our students. Mm -hmm. So just some tips for finding pictures, but, um, um, you know, I, I kind of like this one down here, but again, this takes, this is the thing that takes the most time, mm -hmm. right? Because you have to say, what is immediate to our students across any culture? But it doesn't show them in a in a classroom. But I mean, you it's don't want the general students. one. The picture doesn't have to be about a class. The comprehension questions will be about the class. But it says okay. school services. But that's not until not that's only we only do school services for this bottom quadrant. Everything else is this is this is universal. This is universal. Oh. This is this is the then only. That wasn't clear. I mean, okay. well, I now didn't we see know. It. Yeah. So now we know. Dave. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. So first thing I thought participation. I know people washing a car together. Everybody's acting together. That's what it is. Now maybe in a classroom would be everybody's let's see if something on the table where everybody's doing something here it looks like just only one person has their hand raised that's when i think of the word participate thank you um daniel so francisco put some notes some questions in the chat that are going to come up in our large group in about four minutes if you guys need to take a bio break right now before we go back into the main room you we're going to just stay here we're not going anywhere we're the lucky group but um you can see <laughs> It says, you know, and we're kind of talking about the questions and concerns. Um, and someone asked the question about how do we do this with our students? Well, first of all, there's, I would say two things, and we'll talk more about this next time. Now we're just kind of creating the quadrant charts, but the main thing is we want to accessibly display it. So maybe we put it at the top of, in the front of the room, we project it onto the whiteboard or the screen in large ways, right? And of course, Riga, you can have everybody use Google Translate, but the more ways we have of um, taking in information, the deeper we're going to um, remember it and, and learn it. Um, so yeah, definitely using your first language is, is great. So anyway, you're going to make sure everyone can see it in front, but also I'm a big fan of index card or half sheets because it's easier to, to, um, to Xerox you know, eight and a half by 11, right? And then you cut them and everybody has a series of half sheets that they can um, fold in half and stick in their back pocket and pull out on the bus or standing in line. Or you can have it in, some of you are really into Schoology, you have your little Quizlet. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we wanna make sure um, that, that with the Google Translate, you know, that like Kevin said, they have the right, it's a, they have the part of speech, and then maybe they have a couple examples, and they check it with someone who's bilingual, like one of their kids or something, if they have kids. Any other questions or concerns about the quadrant charts? Here they come. They're coming okay. back. So, um, yeah. Dave, I have a question. Do the students get to choose the word they want to use for the chart? No. We are creating no. the charts. We give them the charts. It's uh -huh. here's the information, guys. Here's our word for the week, or here's one of the words for the week of the five words say we're going to do. So, mm -hmm. 
um, they don't fill it in. That takes too much time. We just mm -hmm. give it to them. The higher levels, maybe they can take some notes and they can write in the simple meanings and stuff like that. But for the lower levels, here's the stuff. Mm -hmm. Day one, let's do a comprehend after we've kind of shared the picture and they ask them, give them the simple sentences. We ask comprehension, done. No more than 20 minutes on Monday. We got to fit between one and four or five words in those 20 minutes because we've got other things to do with our students, don't we? Mm -hmm. So then, um, then day two, day three, day four, they get more interactive participatory uh, actions to better learn the words, okay? I see people are back in the room. Welcome back, levels literacy one, four, five, six, and um, yes, we are back. So you guys came back Yay. early. You guys were like, "I'm ready to go back." <laughs> no, because we saw the the club. They said, "Have one minute." <laughs> you guys are you guys are good. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just do a little debrief here um, to gain from the collective wisdom of all of the different level teachers here. I'm gonna check the chat real quick. Okay, all right. Let me share the screen. Well, before we do that, the question on the screen was basically the same one um, that you asked, you talked about at the end of your time together. What did you notice about, Myra, I don't know what to tell you, everyone else can hear me, right? So, um, Yes. What did you notice about this process of creating a quadrant chart with a comprehension question? What took time? What was easy? What was hard? What did you have to think hard about to make it work well? Anybody want to share? I will. Yes. Uh, it's Kathy. Where are uh, you, Kathy? I'm right here. Okay, I'm going to highlight you. Great. Okay. Uh, we, the picture, of course, takes time, but in making the sentences, we had to make sure that they were their level. Like when we did fee, we were trying to think what would make sense to them for fee. Oh, let's talk about their books. Let's talk about tuition or the cost of going to school. Um, so it took a little time to make sentences in the present tense, especially for level one, that, that would work for them and not just be a definition that we could understand. Thank you. Yeah, level appropriate, especially for the lower levels. But what works for the lower levels works for the higher levels. So if we get it right for ESL1, we can use the same thing for the higher levels. What else? Thank you, Kathy. What else did sure. you guys notice? Yeah, for us also, this is uh, Ms. Vegas, for us with the understanding. And then it was kind of hard because for level one, understanding, you know, understanding is knowledge, is comprehension. And this is uh, it's a high academic level world, vocabulary right and then how to find the best way for them like to make sense you know like i believe in that case we say like uh, like do you know you know what we are talking about you know we try to go to the the easy vocabulary word that doesn't sounds too complicated even to pronounce you know that's a hard word understanding and the picture yes. as much as we're going to work our butts off to make it really good that's why we have other pieces of the quadrant, because we need a simple meaning. We need an L1 or first language translation, and we need simple examples and a comprehension check. So I appreciate how hard you worked, but that's not the only piece of information because understanding is challenging. What else, Janet, I saw your hand up. Oh, you're muted. Go ahead and unmute for us, Janet. Uh, while she's unmuting, can okay. I say okay. something? Oh, oh go, go ahead. ahead. Kathy, oh. first of all, I wanted to know where you were doing the fee because I want to see what picture you use. And I actually didn't have my hand up. I was scratching my head oh. because it's all it's all hard head work. <laughs> um, Thank you for saying that. You're right. I want to validate that. That's why we gave you guys a lot of time. <laughs> I think where we, was said, the fee? Um, we said the class has the class the class is free. It has no fee. So we Ooh. used two sentences and that that we liked that, but it took us a bit to come to that conclusion. Which level though? One and two. I'm in one and I think we were using the two list. Thank you. Riga and Annie. Yeah. 
Thank you. You're really calling out some really key things here. What else did you guys notice about this process? Was it helpful to have other people? Yes. Kind of check definitely, your perspective. Definitely, definitely helpful to other people. Definitely. What else? Uh, uh, facilitators, what did you notice maybe from the teachers that you want to share? Yeah, it's difficult. The pictures um, were difficult. But like you said, that's why it's a quadrant chart and that each section is a different tool. It's a different way for our students to access the word. So we don't want to get hung up on the picture. We know that we have three other ways that we can help that student understand that word quickly. Right? I and want don't to, have to be experts. I want to congratulate the techies. They did a wonderful job trying to get those pictures in. So thank you, techies. And my group, they were very diligent and enthusiastic about the work. Nice. Uh, an interest, I thought a really interesting point uh, that Margie made at the conclusion was that we have to be careful that after we create the examples that the comprehension questions are closely associated to the topic otherwise. So, yep, people, um, you know, are we, and we we discussed the pictures a lot, and we uh, and we tweaked pictures, and uh, it was a lot of um, comparison. It was really productive. So, yeah, I see Nazareth has her hand up. Before she says that, Nazareth, let me just say, I one thing that became clear in our group that I realized I wasn't clear about is that the picture, the simple meanings, and of course the first language translation are universal. They should be general. They're not tied to one topic because we want students to know they could see this on a CASAS test or instructions or any unit of their book. But when we make those sample sentences and the comprehension question, it's tied to the unit topic. So we're doing two different things here. We want them to have a general understanding, but then when we get those ex examples and the comp comprehension question, it's tied to what we're doing in our class this week. So. Just a note, uh, Nazra, take it away. I was just gonna say, we share many of the same challenges, obviously simplifying the information and some quadrants are more difficult than others. But I wanted to say thank you for putting the examples because we kept saying, okay, let's go back to the example and let's mm -hmm. try to format it that way. So thank you for that. Thanks, Nazra. Other thoughts? Yeah, I'll, I'll chime in. My group, in my group, we had um, Anna Herrera and Jorge. So we had the word area. So we were debating on whether or not if we showed area equals length times width, the picture of that. And that seems to be universal where they understand that. And then we also thought an area, an area on a map, whether or not they would understand that. And so we tried to get both pictures and then Anna came up with an, another picture of a, a guy reading a, a book in in a bean bag and said, a quiet area. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so we were kind of, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out what is the best picture that these students would be able to think, ah, area. So I don't know, I, I want to throw it out to the group. If we had a formula, area equals length times width, would you get that? No, yeah. Dr. James no. is shaking her head. <laughs> you know what, but what I gotta say, you guys struggled, struggled, struggled with the picture, but then when you came up with your simple definition, you put place, it was like, yeah. oh, you know, it, yeah. it was like, that's <laughs> why you have more than one quadrant. Right, well, yeah. And okay. one one thing at a time, one meaning at a time. We did. And just, yeah, and you did. And you go with it. But the math, I probably would wait on. Yeah, I know. But, some of our folks aren't that strong in that area. No, but, no, but that's basic math. Area equals length. Oh yeah. well, you know, if you've well, only gone to but if you've only gone to school no. for four years, you may not have that under your belt. Mm. So I'm you got to think graduate. about this. Yeah, <laughs> I still don't. I still don't. I thank you. Well, I had to look it up. Math is not my forte, but I had to look it up. I like okay. place. I like place. 
So we have a question in the chat. Yeah, quadrant, what format should it be? Josh, can you um, pipe up and tell us what you, can you say a little bit more about your question so we can help it help you? Where are you at, John Church? On. What, what, are we talking about a document, Schoology? Um, what, what platform, what format are, are, should the Quadrant uh, document uh, take? So it's a Google form by level. A that Google includes, document. Were you, I'm, I'm still not sure what you're asking because I'm, yeah, can you say more or someone else help out? So, so how, how are we sharing it with students? Oh, okay. That's the question. Okay, so um, there, you've got this Google form. Share it on your screen if you're in Zoom or share it on your whiteboard or screen if you're in the classroom. Um, I think for as an editor, I would probably do one per page and make sure that, you know, it's not confusing. Mm -hmm. um, for students, you could do a, a printout. I would, if it's one per page, great, or half pages. Um, for depending on the level, there are there's no one correct way to do this. For higher levels, they can write their own notes. For low levels, I just give it to them, um, give it to them as a handout, and they collect it and they put it in a section in their binder. Or like I said earlier, find a way that maybe can be a fold and have it so when they're on the bus or waiting in line or waiting at the doctor's office, they can be reviewing it. Does that help? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, it depends on your class. Maybe you're, you know, Mr. Or Mrs. Projector. So you can project this on the screen or yeah, you're online, obviously, and then you have it in your Schoology or you're just paper based, print it out. But like Dave said, make it super simple looking one per page. Um, it's not really like a flashcard. You don't want this split over two pages and then confusing for them. I will try and edit what you guys have done so it can be cleaner. I see ways as I'm looking at it to make it so we can help you help your students better. So we'll, on our end, we can clean it up, but um, use this work that you've created. Don't do it all over. We're trying to, you know, you guys are helping each other do great stuff, use it. And if you get bored someday and wanna do a couple quadrant charts, jump in there. Um, if I can find a way to, to make that happen in a more official way i'm i'm bob and i are going to talk about it we will but yes yeah, share it with us because these are things we all can use so please share it share the stuff you've done through email throw it on the schoology however which way you can do it please do it okay what i'd love to do right now real quickly is a waterfall chat i want all of you to put your hands on your text on your keyboard and you can know, and participate um in typing in what is your next step with quadrant charts with your students to help them learn academic vocabulary i'm going to type it into the chat the question um don't don't hit enter yet this is waterfall i want to make sure everyone gets a chance to think before stuff starts coming at us so again the question is what is your next step to use quadrant charts to introduce academic vocab in your class. What will you do? What will students do? There's no wrong answers. We're just trying to go to the next place. What's our next step other than, wow, that was great. I got three hours of DSTR. What are we going to do with this? Okay, don't hit enter. Yeah, well, whatever. Go for it. <laughs> Unclear on the waterfall. Chat content. <laughs> All right. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind that this is day one of four days of using this word in different scaffolded ways. So we're not, so just easy. <laughs> You're just thinking about the quadrant chart. We're going to have three to four more days of activities to deepen the learning. But I agree with Mr. Roth, review what we've done so far. Yeah, just take a moment to just <laughs> digest it. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at what you guys are saying, cool. Dave, I have a question for Hit you. Hit it, Marge. 
Is this something our students are creating or is this something Good we are question. creating? Let's be clear. No. I mean, in the higher levels, I mean, as Marge will share herself, students can be have a, a blank quadrant chart and maybe they can do stuff. I would give them a picture. I would give them maybe one or two simple meanings, but, you know, higher level students can do that. But with lower level, I would say just give it to them. They're not really having to create it. You can make it more of a learning a learning task by having giving them one and saying now make your own but what do you think and marge what thoughts do you have for our group no i think it's i think it's um as they in the higher levels they can you know they can do some note taking with it but they mm. can have a dictionary pictionary a mm. binder like dr jane says it's yeah. wonderful it's very personalized and custom i love what you guys are typing thank you margie that's a really great yeah. question Making booklets. Liliana mm -hmm. just said that too. Um, yeah. Good, Berta, make a template posted in Schoology. Mm -hmm. So you guys can link students to this document tomorrow on, on the weekend and say, look at the first three words. We're going to talk about those next week in class and they can get on their own in advance. Mm -hmm. um, just make them viewers, not editors. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you share it, that's really critical. Mm, yeah. 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 Uh, say it with me. Make students viewers only. <laughs> viewers. I'm, I'm having a minor freak out here um, as I think about what could happen here. <laughs> I know. Oh my God. Richard, should we give them access to whatever, all of our Google files and let them yeah. have it? You can <laughs> give students access to everything, just don't let them be editors. <laughs> But hey, Dave, can I say something from like the layman's point of view? If any of you feel like me or have felt like me where this is difficult for me and new to me, I didn't do this when I was in the class. I've learned so much in these last few months. Um, I'm still learning. So if you feel like me and it's like, wow, I, I still don't quite get this, don't worry. It's really revolutionary. And like, I can't wait to try this in a class whenever I'm back in a class because I want to see it in action. But then I hear from the experts and they say it works. Stella was in our group. She was saying it works. Dr. James, it works. Marjorie Schneider, it works. Like you do these little 15 minute chunks and it works. You see results. So I just can't wait. So anyways, I'm a learner. So if you feel like me, don't worry. All right. Uh, before Luis talks, I want, I want to respond to something in the chat that Kevin put because I know there are tech issues when we do this stuff. So I'm gonna share my screen real quick because people said, well, how do you change from sharing as a viewer to an editor? What the heck does that mean? So let's look, here is our document. This is a level two. This is the original document. Um, so, well, Tab, Kevin, you be, the, you be the person who's tell me what to do. What should I do if I'm a teacher and I wanna share this with my students? Okay, so hang on, let me- You tell me and I'll do it. Okay, click on uh, share. Good, I'm gonna use my annotation device so you guys can see better. See it? Share. Then what do I do, Kevin? So uh, then on the, this one says anybody with a link where it says editor, change that to viewer on the right. Okay, because you guys are editors. Then what do I do, Kevin? And then then that point, what you can do is you can copy link and, and, then, click done, and then you can do whatever you want with the link. Okay, then I can share it in my Schoology page or whatever. Um, you might wanna make a copy and, and curate it and make it look better. For now, it's not pretty looking because I wanna make it so that every new quadrant chart is its own page. I think that would just be simpler to look at. All right, does that help you guys? Kevin, thank you for saying that. Do you guys tell me, now someone else tell me what, how I do that. How do I change it back to editor mode? Margarita. Are, are you sending it to us? You have it, you've been working with it, but I will send it to you as well. That's a good, good question, Stephen. So I'm gonna go to share and then what do I do? I think you go back to share and then uh, go where it says, um, you can't see it. Was Directed or something. I can't see the. It should be anyone with the link. Anyone with the link. And then, do I want them? To, if it's, I want to bring it back to me. I change it to. 
editor. Editor, okay. And then I'm going to copy it and I'm done. So if you're going to share, I wouldn't really honestly recommend sharing this with students. I would curate it a little bit because I don't think it's pretty enough to share with students or, mm -hmm. or simple enough. I think in terms of accessibility, this might be a little rocky. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. Okay, enough out of me. Luis, what are you thinking? Luis? Yeah, um, actually, it's ideal that we're talking about this today and last week. And the reason for that is because uh, we're starting the new term on Monday. Uh, so I think it just, it's great, great planning, Dave and Bob. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> the stars are aligned. Yeah, serendipity. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, okay, I have the question is more in terms of more. I don't want to call you back in 10 minutes. Okay, I don't want to inundate my, my students with so many words at the same time. So based on the research, I mean, you guys have read probably pedagogical articles. Um, what would be kind of like an ideal number of words? Margie, per... were you listening to that question? I, I'll, I'll just answer. So when we're talking about academic words, they're not the common words that are more obvious to students. They, for, for traditional native speakers, we say five words a week. For ESL literacy, it might be one every two weeks. You might be working on identify for mm -hmm. two weeks with your literacy. I think you could do more mm -hmm. than that probably mm -hmm. because it's pretty straightforward. But you know what I'm saying? We're saying one to five, depending on your level. Um, and, and Mr. Ayala, stick to one meaning only. Don't expand it. Just one meaning and the picture connects to that meaning and the comprehension check connects to that meeting and they can build upon it. They'll like it. They'll like it. Thank you. Good question. Other questions? Yeah, that, that is this is your time, guys. Let it out. What are the, the things that are holding you up that would keep you from doing this on Monday with your new trimester? Uh, Kevin, question? Kevin, a little... Um, well, pro tip, because I actually kind of use this of sorts. Uh, I use a modified version of this, per se. <clears throat> but the way that I've done it is I have a Google Doc, and I email it to my students. I actually, in Schoology, um, I have little buttons, and they click on their little button for that says my email. Um, and then they're able to see it. And then I sign it on the board, and the students literally have it on their on their computer. And then we then we go through it, and then um, I actually have like a little conversation practice that they can do, and everything is on is on Schoology, and so everything is on their on their Chromebook, and then therefore they actually literally have it right here, and they take their Chromebook around and they talk to each other, things like that. So um, anyway, Great. that's a little pro tip that I would recommend because that way you, you're not getting the students sitting in the back of the room trying to look over and find right. and what. Accessibility is everything. Beautiful. You, you don't guys, have to deal with the with the with the eyesight or the ear hearing it. That yeah. everything is like literally right there, right right in front of them. Beautiful. Okay. So I'd like to round out our time and move us towards completion, guys. I'm good. There's a couple more slides to help us um, think about what we're going to do. And thank you, Bob, for responding to Vanessa. We will send you the links to the academic folder, so you have it for all levels, and then you just click on the one for you. Um, Bob and I and Margie and Francisco will take a look at the work and we'll kind of clean up our formatting and um, see where we're at. And so what does that do? What does that mean for us next? Let's look at the screen. Just a second here. Okay. So we've had a pretty good debrief. What's what's coming? So First of all, um, we have our last community of practice for the year, Friday. Whoops, it didn't even put the date on there. <laughs> Friday. I think oh, it there shows it up there. May 3rd, May 3rd. We're going to kind of cycle back, review what we've done, and talk about the routines for days two through four, because day one is just the introduction. Students are not going to remember it from one day. So, but we want to have a routine. So it's it's easy for students to learn these new words and easy for us because it's always the same, but the topics change and the way we have students interact changes. So it's, it's got that nice combination of routine, but novelty. 
which every teacher and student wants. So that's going to be marked. And pick up your phone, please, and put it in your calendar. Open to May 3rd. Put ESLCOP, 1 to 4 p.m. Okay. All right. Thanks, you guys. So what else is coming? You're so pushy. I am. I'm just that person. <laughs> so we've changed the dates for our four-week intensive. We're going to wait till after spring break. So it's all together. There's no gap. So it's starting later. So change, if you have this in your phone, change it. It's going to be from April 2nd to May 3rd. And what is this? Well, it's 15 hours of DSTR or SSA because we're really going to go deep. We're going to um, have a mastery learning focus. So you're going to learn how to give students lots of opportunities to grow and improve with feedback. But we're going to model that. We're going to do that ourselves in this course. So we're going to model what we want to do in our classrooms and, and hopefully that will be helpful. And again, it's tied to the PLC approach. What does that mean? That means week one, what do students need to know? Week two, how will we know and how will they know if they're getting it? And week three and four, what are we going to do to enrich or to scaffold? Because we want what we do in our PD to be able to be transferable to our PLCs. And so it's all about reading comprehension. We were going to, I was going to make it about reading fluency and reading alphabetics and more vocabulary. And I'm like, oh, heck no. Let's just focus on reading comprehension. And in particular, the wonderful new reading rubric that we have and how to get the most bang for the buck on that. Okay. So there's before, during, and after strategies for reading comprehension. Next year, we'll look at fluency and alphabetics and, and go deeper. Okay. Comments, questions? Isn't that during our spring break? It's after spring break. Spring break is the last week of March. Oh, it is. Okay. Is it like a self-study or do we meet on Zoom? No, it's going to be all asynchronous, okay. except there are two web and, well, actually, no. There are some really great in-person things. We have two webinars, one early, one late, and then there's going to be check-ins. I'm going to be modeling some diagnostic stuff you can do with students. And I'm also going to be having check-ins with you guys so you can talk with me and we can do some coaching and see what is working for you, what isn't, okay? And I'll, I'll send you, um, let me just show you here. You can click on this link to look at the syllabus. And I'll be honest with you, it's going to change a little bit because I'm simplifying it. But this will give you some ideas. This is the one that you had starting on the 18th of March yes, originally? Okay. It's, we're bumping it later. And I do, I think I signed up for it. I'm not, do you have, did, did, did you already put that out or? Um, we did have a, we do have a registration. Some of you already signed up. Oops, let me go back. Um, where is this the registration? Hang on. Bob, do me a favor. I'm going to put this link in the chat. Can you check if it's the registration or not? Okay. I'm looking at it. It still has the old dates, Dave. Uh, but is it a registration form? I'm just trying to get to the end because I'm on my. Is it a Google Doc? Take a it look is, at that. It is a Google Doc. If that helps. I mean, is it a Google form, Bob? Can you tell me how? Is no. It, is, no. No. Okay. Guess the what? The syllabus. I will send it to you. <laughs> We're going to actually probably send it to the whole ESL uh, program yeah. across the division because the dates have changed. Blah blah blah. Okay. All right. Let's finish up, guys. I know you're getting antsy, and so am I. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to do is ask, um, I'll do it, is to put this. I put it in the chat. You got it? OK, thanks, Bob. We want to hear what you think, OK? Please sign in. Sign in today. The sooner you sign in, the sooner we can get people paid. Please. Do it now. You don't have to stay in the Zoom room. You can like say goodbye and do it in the privacy of your quiet home without us mm -hmm. hovering. Um, but yeah, please, because we've been having, you know, problems with delayed payments. And part of it is when we have these big COPs and we get these trickle in feedback forms over the course of a week to two weeks, we can't keep resubmitting it. It kind of delays everybody. So please make sure that you're logged into your LAUSD account and then you'll be able to fill out the sign in feedback form. Make sure your spelling is correct. Okay. Raise your hand if you're doing the form or you can see it right now. 
Okay, Yvonne, I recommend not driving next time. <laughs> I'm calling you out, lady. All right, but we really do want to, um, we really do want to have you guys do this as soon as possible so we can expedite the compensation process, okay? Everyone working on it? Yes. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you, guys. I don't know about you, but I really appreciated our interaction and our ESL2 people, our participation. <laughs> Any words for the good of the order from anybody in the room? Uh, this was a this was great. Thanks. It really helps um, to do these so we can learn better how to teach vocabulary. These hearts. Thanks, Riga. Thanks, Riga. Thanks can to our we, facilitators. Can Thanks we take a, a fun you. selfie, Dave? Can we do a screenshot where we're all waving and we're just ready for the weekend? And I'm yes. going to do a screenshot of us.